a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. John Franklin Rear Admiral Sir John Franklin KCH FRGS was an English Royal Navy officer and explorer of the Arctic. Franklin also served as Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land from 1837 to 1843. He disappeared on his last expedition, attempting to chart and navigate a section of the Northwest Passage in the Canadian Arctic. The icebound ships were abandoned and the entire crew died of starvation, hypothermia, tuberculosis, lead poisoning, and scurvy. Early Life Franklin was born in Spilsby, Lincolnshire, on 16 April 1786, the ninth of twelve children born to Hannah Weeks and Willingham Franklin. His father was a merchant descended from a line of country gentlemen while his mother was the daughter of a farmer. One of his brothers later entered the legal profession and eventually became a judge in Madras. Another joined the East India Company, while a sister, Sarah, was the mother of Emily Tennyson. Educated at King Edward VI Grammar School in Louth, he soon became interested in a career at sea. His father, who intended for Franklin to enter the church or become a businessman, was initially opposed, but was reluctantly convinced to allow him to go on a trial voyage with a merchant ship when he was age 12. His experience of seafaring only confirmed his interest in a career at sea, so in March 1800, Franklin's father secured him a Royal Navy appointment on HMS Polyphemus. Commanded by a Captain Lawford, the Polyphemus carried 64 guns and, at the time of Franklin's appointment, was still at sea. He did not join the vessel until the autumn of 1800, initially serving as a first-class volunteer. Franklin soon saw action in the Battle of Copenhagen in which the Polyphemus participated as part of Horatio Nelson's squadron. An expedition to the coast of Australia aboard the HMS Investigator, commanded by Captain Matthew Flinders, followed, with Franklin now a midshipman. He was present at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, and the Battle of New Orleans. He also accompanied Captain Dance on the East India Company's ship the Earl Camden, frightening off Admiral Lenoy at the Battle of Pula Ora in the Straits of Malacca on 14 February 1804. 1819, Copper Mine River in 1819, Franklin was chosen to lead an expedition overland from Hudson Bay to chart the north coast of Canada eastwards, from the mouth of the Coppermine River. On his 1819 expedition, Franklin fell into the Hayes River at Robinson Falls and was rescued by a member of his expedition about 90 meters downstream. Between 1819 and 1822, he lost 11 of the 20 men in his party. Most died of starvation but there were also at least one murder and suggestions of cannibalism. The survivors were forced to eat like an and even attempted to eat their own leather boots. This gained Franklin the nickname of the man who ate his boots. 1823, Marriage and Third Arctic Expedition In 1823, after returning to England, Sir John Franklin married the poet Eleanor Ann Porden. Their daughter, Eleanor Isabella, was born the following year. Eleanor died of tuberculosis in 1825. In 1825, he left for his second Canadian and third Arctic expedition. The goal this time was the mouth of the Mackenzie River from which he would follow the coast westward, and possibly meet Frederick William Beachy who would try to sail northeast from the Burring Strait. With him was John Richardson who would follow the coast east from the Mackenzie to the mouth of the Coppermine River. At the same time, William Edward Parry would try to sail west from the Atlantic, Supplies were better organized this time, in part, because they were managed by Peter Warren Deese of the Hudson's Bay Company. After reaching the Great Slave Lake using the standard HBC route, Franklin took a reconnaissance trip 1,000 miles down the Mackenzie and on 16 August 1825, became the second European to reach its mouth. He erected a flagpole with buried letters for Parry. He returned to winter at Fort Franklin on the Great Bear Lake. The following summer he went downriver and found the ocean frozen. He worked his way west for several hundred miles and gave up on 16 August 1826, at Return Reef when he was about 150 miles east of Beaches Point Barrow. Reaching safety at Fort Franklin on 21 September, he left Fort Franklin on 20 February 1827 and spent the rest of the winter and spring at Fort Chippewyan. Alberta. He reached Liverpool on 1 September 1827. 
Richardson's eastward journey was more successful. On 5 November 1828, he married Jane Griffin, a friend of his first wife and a seasoned traveler who proved indomitable in the course of their life together. On 29 April 1829, he was knighted by George IV and the same year awarded the first gold medal of the Société de Géographie of France. On 25 January 1836, he was made Knight Commander of the Royal Guelphic Order by King William IV. He was made a Knight of the Greek Order of the Redeemer as well. 1836, Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania. Franklin was appointed Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land in 1836, but was removed from office in 1843. He is remembered by a significant landmark in the center of Hobart. A statue of him dominates the park known as Franklin Square, which was the site of the original government house. On the plinth below the statue appears Tennyson's epitaph, not here. The white north hath thy bones. And thou, heroic sailor soul, art passing on thine happier voyage now, toward no earthly pole. His wife worked to set up a university, which was eventually established in 1890, a museum credited to the Royal Society of Tasmania in 1843 under the leadership of her husband. Lady Jane Franklin may have worked to have the Lieutenant Governor's private botanical gardens, established in 1818, managed as a public resource. Lady Franklin also established a glyptech tech and surrounding lands to support it near Hobart. It was her intent to civilize the colony. The village of Franklin, on the Huon River, is named in his honor, as is the Franklin River on the west coast of Tasmania one of the better-known Tasmanian rivers due to the Franklin Dam controversy. 1843, Visit to Victoria Shortly after leaving his post as governor of Tasmania Franklin revisited a cairn on Arthur's seat, a small mountain just inside Port Phillip Bay, that he had visited as a midshipman with Captain Matthew Flinders in April 1802. On this trip he was accompanied by Captain Reed of the Briars and Andrew Morrison McRae of Arthur's seat station, now known as McRae Homestead. 1845, Northwest Passage Expedition Exploration of the Arctic coastal mainland after Franklin's second Arctic expedition had left less than 500 kilometers of unexplored Arctic coastline. The British decided to send a well-equipped Arctic expedition to complete the charting of the Northwest Passage. After Sir James Ross declined an offer to command the expedition, an invitation was extended to Franklin, who accepted despite his age. A younger man, Captain James Fitz James, was given command of HMS Erebus and Franklin was named the expedition commander. Captain Francis Rod and Moira Crozier, who had commanded HMS Terra during the Ross 1841-44 Antarctic Expedition, was appointed executive officer and commander of HMS Terra. Franklin was given command on 7 February 1845, and received official instructions on 5 May 1845. HMS Erebus at 370 LT and HMS Terror at 340 LT were sturdily built and were outfitted with recent inventions. These included steam engines from the London and Greenwich Railway that enabled the ships to make four knots on their own power, a unique combined steam-based heating and distillation system for the comfort of the crew and to provide large quantities of fresh water for the engine's boilers, a mechanism that enabled the iron rudder and propeller to be drawn into iron wells to protect them from damage, ships' libraries of more than 1,000 books, and three years' worth of conventionally preserved or tin-preserved food supplies. Unfortunately, the latter was supplied from a car trade provisioner who was awarded the contract only a few months before the ships were to sail. Though the provisioner's patent process was sound, the haste with which he had prepared thousands of cans of food led to sloppily applied beads of solder on the can's interior edges, allowing lead to leach into the food. Additionally, the water distillation system may have used lead piping and lead solder joints, which would have produced drinking water with a high lead content. Chosen by the Admiralty, most of the crew were Englishmen, many from the north of England with a small number of Irishmen and Scotsmen. The Franklin expedition set sail from Greenhithe, England, on 19 May 1845, with a crew of 24 officers and 110 men. The ships travelled north to Aberdeen and the Orkney Isles for supplies. From Scotland, the ships sailed to Greenland with HMS Rattler and a transport ship, Beretta Jr. After misjudging the location of Whitefish Bay, Disco Island, 
Greenland, the expedition backtracked and finally harbored in that far north outpost to prepare for the rest of their voyage. Five crew members were discharged and sent home on the Rattler and Beretta Jr., reducing the ship's final crew size to 129. The expedition was last seen by Europeans on 26 July 1845, when Captain Danette of the whaler Prince of Wales encountered terror and Erebus moored to an iceberg in Lancaster Sound. It is now believed that the expedition wintered in 1845-46 on Beachy Island. Terror and Erebus became trapped in ice off King William Island in September 1846 and never sailed again. According to a note later found on that island, Franklin died there on the 11th of June 1847. To date, the exact location of his grave is unknown. After two years and no word from the expedition, Franklin's wife urged the Admiralty to send a search party, because the crew carried supplies for three years. The Admiralty waited another year before launching a search and offering a £20,000 reward for finding the expedition. The money and Franklin's fame led to many searches. At one point, ten British and two American ships, USS Advance and USS Rescue, headed for the Arctic. Eventually, more ships and men were lost looking for Franklin than in the expedition itself. Ballads such as, Lady Franklin's Lament, commemorating Lady Franklin's search for her lost husband, became popular. In the summer of 1850, expeditions including three from England as well as one from the United States joined in the search. They converged off the east coast of Beachy Island, where the first relics of the Franklin expedition were found, including the grave sites of three Franklin expedition crewmen. Franklin was presumed to be still alive by many, and was promoted Rear Admiral of the Blue in October 1852, an example of an unintentional posthumous promotion. In 1854, the Scottish explorer Dr John Ray, while surveying the Boothia Peninsula for the Hudson's Bay Company, discovered the true fate of the Franklin party from talking to Inuit hunters. He was told both ships had become icebound, the men had tried to reach safety on foot, but had succumbed to cold and some had resorted to cannibalism. Ray's report to the Admiralty was leaked to the press, which led to widespread revulsion in Victorian society, enraged Franklin's widow and condemned Ray to ignominy. Lady Franklin's efforts to eulogize her husband, with support from the British establishment, led to a further 25 searches over the next four decades, none of which would add any further information of note. In the mid-1980s, Owen Beatty, a University of Alberta professor of anthropology, began a 10-year series of scientific studies known as the 1845-48 Franklin Expedition Forensic Anthropology Project, showing that the Beachy Island crew had most likely died of pneumonia and perhaps tuberculosis. Toxicological reports indicated that lead poisoning was also a possible factor. In 1997, more than 140 years after Dr. Ray's report, his account was finally vindicated. Blade cut marks on the bones of some of the crew found on King William Island strongly suggested that conditions had become so dire that some crew members resorted to cannibalism. Evidence suggestive of breakage and boiling of bones, characteristic of efforts to extract marrow, was subsequently identified. It appeared from these studies that a combination of bad weather, years locked in ice, poisoned food, botulism, starvation, and disease including scurvy, had killed everyone in the Franklin party. In October 2009, Robert Grenny outlined recent discoveries of sheet metal and copper which have been recovered from 19th century Inuit hunting sites. Grenier firmly believes these pieces of metal once belonged to the terror and formed the protective plating of the ship's hull. A quote from the British newspaper The Guardian states the following. After studying 19th century Inuit oral testimony which included eyewitness descriptions of starving, exhausted men staggering through the snow without condescending to ask local people how they survived in such a wilderness. Grenier believes the 19th century official accounts that all the surviving expedition members abandoned their ice-locked ships are wrong. He believes both ships drifted southwards, with at least two crew remaining until the final destruction of their vessels. One broke up, but Inuit hunters arriving at their summer hunting grounds reported discovering another ship floating in fresh ice in a cove. They're not very strong on location or date, Grenier said. They have all the space and time in the world, but what they reported seems quite clear. The ship, probably the Terror, was very neat and orderly, 
but the Inuit descended into the darkness of the hull with their sea loyal lamps, where they found a tall dead man in an inner cabin. Grenier believes it was there they recovered the copper, which was more valuable than gold, to them, and tools including shears from the ship's workshop with which to work it. Hauntingly, they also reported that one of the masts was on fire. Grenier wonders if what they saw was the funnel from the galley still smoking, from a meal cooked that morning, before the last of Franklin's men disappeared from history. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like